Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this quick tip video, we're going to be taking a look at the get child item commandlet. So this commandlet is often used to kind of look through folders and files. Um, you could parse through and recurse through all these different files and folders, which we're going to be seeing how to do that today as well. But something that's often not known about get child item is you can also use it on the registry and on the certificate store as well. So we'll be looking at those examples at the end of the video as well. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started at looking at what exactly does get child item do. So we're going to be using um, the C scripts directory on my computer. It has a lot of different folders. Um, it does have a hidden file here. So if I actually uh, go ahead in the properties here, we will actually see uh, that it is a hidden file. So we will actually be able to uh, look at those and see the different options that we have with get child item. So let's just go ahead and let's do a get child item with a path here. And we're going to do a C colon backslash scripts. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to run this. And this is going to give us just the exact layout of our C scripts, um, which actually did not, there you go. Uh, so here is all the different files and folders in our C scripts here. So if we actually just open this up and go into scripts, we will actually see here we have two through 11 and then intermediate tutorials, quick tips, and the test hidden. So we do have two um through till 11 our intermediate tutorials and quick tips but we don't have that hidden file so there is actually two methods of getting hidden files with get child item we can actually add the parameter called hidden but when we actually execute this one we actually only get the hidden files so the parameter of hidden will only get you hidden files so only gets hidden files. What we can actually do is add a, another parameter called dash force, and this will actually forcefully get all of the files and folders, including the hidden ones. So here now we have our two through 11 folders, intermediate tutorials, quick tips, and our test hidden.txt. So this is great. We are able to get our hidden files. But now let's say we actually wanted to go ahead and we wanted to parse through all these different folders. What we can actually do with get child item, actually, let me just add a comment here, gets all files, including hidden file. All right, what we can actually do is add our so we're going to keep the force on here. And what we can actually do is add recurse. And what this is going to do it is going to get us all the files and folders and actually go inside the folders and get us the files and folders in there and keep going till it is only files. So if we actually execute this, we will actually see we get a bunch of different options here. Uh, so we have a bunch of the different directories, the files inside of those directories. It just creates us a whole list of stuff here. So this could be useful if we want to get all the files and folders, including all the child folders and files inside of all the child folders and files. It'll just keep going all the way to the end. Maybe we want to do this. Maybe we want to get all the files on the C drive and we just want to know all the name of all the different files um, because we want to store the hash of those to make sure that none of them change. Uh, that is just a purely an example here. Uh, so it gets all files and folders and recurses into child folders. But now let's say if we wanted to um, go ahead and just take our original option here, which was just get child item force. And let's say we only wanted to go into these folders one level down. We didn't want to go all the way down. We only wanted to go one level. You can actually specify that using the depth parameter. 
And in here, you would actually be able to specify a number. So if we do one, we will only go one folder in. Now, if we do two, we're going to go two folders in. Uh, so as you can see, this you can quickly easily get back to recurse if you know exactly how many folders are in there, or if you just put like an absurdly large number in here. And if you just put zero, what will happen is it will just get you the default option where it just gets the child item. It will not go into a folder. So once you start at one, it will go into the folders once. Once you put two, it'll go into those folders and those folders, child folders as well, um, and so on. If you go to three, four, and beyond. Uh, so let's just do that here. Get all files and folders and one level down as well. And then we can also apply some different filters and some different types of filters like includes or exclusions of files that we want or don't want on these as well. So let's actually just go ahead and once again, let's just do a force and a recurse here because we want to go through all of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a filter and all we want to do is actually filter on a star dot PS one. So this will actually give us all of the PowerShell scripts. So if we actually run this, it goes through all the different folders and will actually only give us back the .ps1 files, which are which is our PowerShell scripts. Now, if I change this filter, I can change this to an include and it will give me the exact same results as well. And what I can even do is let's say I wanted to, um, I wanted to eliminate um, all the files that start with just script.ps1. What I can actually do is do an exclude here and I could do a script. So anything that starts with script, I don't want it. And there it is. Now I should not have that script file and it does not come up. Um, so that is an example there that you can use exclude. If you do put include or exclude, it doesn't matter what order you put them in the exclusions will always interact afterwards. So if you include something, but it's actually in the exclusion as well, the exclusion will always remove it from the result set, even if you put the exclude before the include in your parameter list. So that is something uh, to remember, but even what you can even do is let's say we wanted to, instead of getting all the PowerShell scripts, let's get everything that is not a PowerShell script we would also be able to do that. So now it only gives us our text files, our CSV, JSON, XML files, our folders. Uh, now, as you can see, as I just mentioned, it gets us the folders as well. Let's say we only wanted our files. What we can actually do is also add a parameter called file here. And this will only return us files. It will not return us any directories. So here will just give us the file names, no directories. And of course, there is also a parameter to just return us the directories. If all we wanted is just the folder names, and we didn't actually care about the um, file names, we can actually do that completely as well. So that could be very, very handy if all you need is folder names instead of file names. So that pretty much covers it for the files and folders with get child item. Now let's actually take a look at some of the more obscure uh, things that you can get with get child item that people might not necessarily know, um, but that could be very useful. Now let's say you wanted to check some different settings on a bunch of your different servers. Uh, so you can use this with PowerShell remoting, of course. And you wanted to check a specific registry setting because there should be a specific setting in the registry for a certain option. What we can actually do is if you do a get child item and then a path here, and then in the path, what we're going to do is we're going to do a set of double quotes. 
And we are just going to do an HKLM. And this is going to be for the H key local machine. Now, if you want to know where I got this from, if you open up your reg edit on your computer, we will actually see the H key local machine, H key current user, H key classes root. Um, so this is the HKLM. This would be HKCU. This is HKU, HKCC, and HKCR. Um, so that might be a little tricky at first, um, but once you kind of get used to them, and most of the time, in my experience anyways, I've usually always used either current user or local machine. Most of the time it is the local machine. So let's take a look at local machine. And we're actually going to be going into system, current control set, policies, hardware, and Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth actually has properties. So this is actually, it looks like a folder, but according to Windows, when you're actually looking at the system, Bluetooth actually becomes an item. So we're gonna actually see how that kind of works out in just a second here. So let's do HKLM backslash. Now, of course, you're always gonna get this autocomplete um, when you're dealing with PowerShell in Visual Studio Code, or in, even in the ISE. Uh, depending or Visual Studio Code, mostly depending on if you have that extension properly set up. And in the ISE, you will have this as well. So let's go into System, uh, Current Control Set, Policies, Hardware. And then here we have Bluetooth. It will show up as a folder. But once I actually get this here, so let's do our get child item, we will see that we actually get nothing. And even if I add a slash after Bluetooth, I still get nothing. So you might think that it's not working properly, but actually if you just bring it down to hardware backslash and not put the Bluetooth in here and you just run this, you will actually see we get the results that we want. We actually get our, our hardware and then we have all the different options. And there is the name of our option here, Bluetooth, and then there's all the different properties. Uh, which are right here. Um, so you can actually definitely get these. If you wanted to get these specific Bluetooth item properties, there is a separate command line for that. If you wanted to specify the slash Bluetooth slash, it would be get item property because Bluetooth is actually an item and not a actual folder. Um, but get child item, you can actually manipulate the registry. You would just have to make sure that you know the exact path. So make sure that you test it out first. Maybe also create a pester script to make sure that you're getting back the properties that you're actually expecting. And then in here, you would then be able to go ahead and check, make sure that your certain options are set up, like allow advertising is one, allow Bluetooth is set to two. Uh, now, I don't actually know what these settings actually stand for or the numbers actually stand for. I just picked Bluetooth as a random example here. Uh, but you would be able to get child item on registry entries and make sure that the registry entries match what they should be. And if they aren't, maybe alert someone or you can then use different commandlets to actually interact with the registry and make that registry change. Now, another thing that you can use get child item for is actually the certificate store. Now, this could be, again, very useful for your different servers, especially if you have a lot of certificates that you might be dealing with and you want to see where that certificate is being used. Uh, what I've done in the past is I actually get all my servers from Active Directory and then I will run remote code on them and get the child item for the certificate store, looking for the specific certificate common and friendly name. Uh, and then it tells me if that server actually has that certificate on it or not. So it tells me where, when I actually renew that certificate on GoDaddy or DigiCert, it tells me then where I need to replace it. So this could be something very, very useful. Maybe not super useful for your personal computers, um, but maybe for your home labs, if you have SSL certificates, or definitely for your work environment if you guys actually manage a lot of different uh, web services or different services that require SSL certificates. So to do that here is you would do a get dash child item and then the path parameter, and then you would put a cert colon backslash, 
And then once again, you're going to have that auto complete here. And we're going to do local machine. And we are just going to look at root here. And if we actually just, we can also wrap this in double quotes, of course, that will not change anything. And we get all of our certificates. And as you can see, we get some information. We don't get all the information, but if we actually pipe this to a select dash object and then a star, we will actually get all that information in here for us. So we can actually get even the, let me just find one here. Uh, so we can get the not after. So you can actually find expired certificates. This is what I used. So what I typically do uh, for a certificate would be um, as I would have a where dash object here. And then of course I would specify it was the friendly name first, um, but I don't, this is a personal computer, so I don't actually have a certificate with a friendly name that I would know that would potentially be expiring. But here we would have a where object, not after, and then lesser than. And then what you do is you would put a variable wrapper here and do the get dash date commandlet, and then add days per se, and add, let's just add 365 days to make it a year. I could have just done the add years in this case. Um, but what you could do is if you're writing a script to know where the certificate's expiring, maybe you want to know 60 days ahead of time. So you would put 60 and this way you'd be able to plan accordingly uh, with the different people on your team to replace those certificates on time so they don't expire on that server. Um, but here we go. If we actually run this right now on my local machine root, of where not after is less than a year from now, we will get tons and you should also probably get tons if you run this on your personal computer, because if we actually output this to out grid view, which we've seen on another quick tip video, um, we can actually see, um, so what we're just gonna do is we are just gonna make sure that we pipe that first to a select object star, and that will give us all the different properties. And then here we can actually take a look at it. So here we have all the different paths, all the different um, thumbprints of the different certificates that are expiring within a year, the friendly names of the certificates that are expiring within a year. And here is the actual uh, data here. So actually all of these are already expired. Um, you'll probably have these on your personal computer as well. Uh, for some reason, I'm not 100% sure why, uh, but it seems like Windows, even Windows 11, still comes with very, very old certificates just on there expiring in 1999 um, and 2004 even. Um, so this could be a very useful tool. Again, more for a professional environment if you're using SSL certificates. Filter it by the friendly name and then filter it by the not after and then give yourself a little buffer time. Um, Cause of course, GoDaddy and DigiCert will tell you when the cert is expiring and give you enough time to renew it. But after that, if for some reason, um, someone that's put in a system has quit or left since then, and now that certificate is renewing and you're not sure what server it's on, being able to run this on every server and seeing if that certificate is there or not is very, very useful. Uh, so that is, another use for the get child item. I would highly recommend checking out the get child item for the certificate store and the registry and not just file and folders. Although the file and folders are very useful, uh, you could probably get a lot more benefits out of get child item for your automation scripts with the registry checks and the certificate stores. So hopefully that guys help that helped you guys with the get child item commandlet. If you guys have any other command list that you guys would like me to go over, please let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below as well. I will try my best to get back to you guys. Or if it's something that can benefit a lot of people, I will make a video on it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.